good people this is infinite one tv and you're welcome to spotlight this is where we'll talk about important things with very important people i'm your girl afrodaima also known as wanyoka ive rikeno and with me in the studio today i have very important guests i have dr uche umozo he is a practicing physician in the united states Ah, oh, so it's it's very 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 i mean it's a privilege to have you here today please say hi to our viewers hi thank you for inviting me and thank you for having me in your studio <laughs> you're welcome sir and i have professor joe umeobika he is also um he works at chukwemeka odumego juku university the chain hospital in Oka. So you're welcome. Please say hi to our viewers. Good evening, my viewers. Thank you for having me this evening. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. So here we we'll have very vital um, questions for you both, and uh, we'll pray that our viewers will also enjoy this with us. Now, sir, please, um, can you introduce yourself for us? What you do and um, your work roles, how it's like over there in the United States. Thank you. Um, I did my medical school in Nigeria, University of Nigeria Medical School, and then relocated to the United States. Currently, um, I had uh, director of medical services uh, in Behavioral Hospital, which is uh, Kings County, which is a city hospital in New York. I'm also a um, clinical assistant professor of medicine in the State University of New York downstate program. Specialty wise, I did internal medicine and geriatrics. Oh, Thank wow. you. Wow, wow. That's a very, very, I mean, oh, your CV don't fool like this. <laughs> nice one. Nice one, sir. Okay, um, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you your experience in your field. So, um, as a medical doctor, um, I think it's a very, very fulfilling experience. And um, to do that, you really will want to do that, to be a doctor, because it involves uh, going through medical school, which is a lot, and, you know, putting in a long work hours. Practically at the middle of the night, you know, you might be called because there's an emergency. Imagine, yeah. But, you know, it's a very, very, very fulfilling okay. you know, profession. Wow. Wow, that's a big deal. I, I mean, I can't imagine having my um, sound sleep and someone calling me on the phone, telling me there's an emergency that should start coming out more. Well, I really appreciate you guys. It's, it's, it's a very big challenge at the same time. Okay, sir, um, Professor Joe Umeobika, please, can you brief us about your role in your field? Oh, um, I, I'm a, a lecturer in the College of Medicine, Chukwe Mekod Megoju University Teaching Hospital, and then an honorary consultant to the University of Nigeria, I mean, Chukwe Mekod Megoju University Teaching Hospital. Okay. So, in the aspect of uh, being a lecturer in the College of Medicine, we teach medical students. We give them lectures. Then, in order to practicalize what we taught them in the school, we now take them over to the teaching hospital and use patients oh, wow. to teach them practical, the practical aspect of what we taught them and the theory in the theory in the class. So that is why, why in, a, in, in every college of medicine, you have a teaching hospital counterparts yeah, for, for practical oh, okay. purposes. But sir, so, if I may ask, will you be operating on the patient? The patient, uh, I mean, your... Yes, if we, see, if we see patients that require surgery, we do, we do, we do surgeries. But, That's the major thing we do. But that will be your work and not the students practicing with No, you. they will be watching us as we are operating because when we, when, uh, when they graduate, they will be on their own. If they don't see where the thing is done practically yeah. there won't be any way they will practice on their own okay. so as we are we take them to the theater as we are operating we'll be showing them what and what and what those things we taught them in class this is 
the thing practically in a patient wow. you understand so okay. so, so that by the time you know mm. practice um when you are practicing you have to at least it's an action word now yes. so how do they now they don't just stand there and look while you practice so no, why what no. do they practice on no all those things when we te- after teaching them they will now graduate they will graduate then it is when they become house officers house man- when they are doing their housemanship okay. that they will now start putting into practice oh, and they will under okay. supervision because housemanship is they now practice for one year under supervision okay. as they are students they are not allowed to okay. do yes. do operate on people okay Okay. You know, so it's only when they become doctors now they will then they will do housemanship, which is one year practice under supervision. This this is done in a teaching hospital. Okay. You don't go outside in a private hospital and do housemanship. Okay. It's rarely rarely do you do such a thing when you have well equipped private hospitals. Then you can do such a thing. Okay, sir. So then over to you, Doctor Uche. Um, I know that the medical system in Nigeria is far different from the one in US. So according to what Professor Professor Jill just said, do you is that how they operate over there too? So basically, um, the the basic construct of medical education is the same. But there might be just a little variation in terms of the availability of the equipment. But the teaching aspect of you know the students, they watch, they assist, they are taught, and they learn. So that basic construct of medical education is basically the same. So the housemanship, Abi, is that that what you call it, right? The housemanship um, over there is it? Does it take the same duration with here in Nigeria? Like one year, like you said. Yeah. So I think yeah, in terms of because I have seen both worlds. You know, I practice over there. I'm a teaching clinical assistant professor, and I did my medical school here. So there is a different basic construct in terms of the structure of the medical education. Because like in Nigeria, people apply and get admission to medical school and they do a straight six years. But over there, you do first you get your bachelor's degree in whatever area and then you apply to medical school where you do your clinical so that's you know the little difference in terms of the medical education okay what do you have to contribute um when it comes to quack in the field because i think when the i I think probably i I wouldn't use the the word quack but you know i mean people are entitled to their opinion because medical training is a very 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 rigorous exercise and what I will always say, which probably uh, might lead to your questions, as, as a doctor, for somebody to go into and go to medical school, that person is not stupid. So for you to have a successful medical practice, you need to have equipment and then the manpower. Yes. But as my, my colleague just said, for you to practice medicine, it needs dedication and empathy um, for you to be empathic with management of your patients. Now, sometimes you go against your personal, I mean, will or whatever, in order to satisfy a patient. For you to do those things, you really need to have a, a supportive government, you know even if there is no amount of uh, money you pay a medical doctor that will be equal to the life the doctor serves but at least one need to have something one need to be given remunerations that should be able to sort out his basic problems for you to be in a good state of mind to take care of patients that is where our, our government is having serious issues with doctors these days okay. and for that you now see the, you now have this jama syndrome somebody will finish nigeria will suffer three medical doctors once they come out they will go to but places they where they take care of them very well yes here there's there a union now there's union for there's a union the union i mean maybe nigeria medical association nigeria medical and dental council Association of Resident Doctors. You have a lot of 
unions in medical practice in Nigeria. But the union will make their recommendations and demand, but it is the government. It is the government that will have to implement those things. So when the politicians are not, maybe either that they don't, they are not aware of these things, but I won't say that they are not aware because they travel abroad. They see all these things over there. Oh. When they have slight headache here, they will fly abroad yes. to receive their own medical plan. What of poor men? Feel. What that's of poor thing. people living in this that's country why they that don't cannot feel anything? much when it comes to that? That's why they so don't that's my advice is that they so should, there. since they travel abroad to receive these medical Treatment. treatments, they should try to replicate those things that are seen there in our country, Nigeria. So that even the poor people that don't have money to fly abroad when they are sick will also be benefiting. Yes. That's, that's, okay. that, I mean, that's, that's the very... basic thing they should do. So the government should take note of this. And okay, Dr. Uche, um, have you experienced losing a patient right before you? Yes, I have. Um, like, I have been a practicing uh, physician for probably 20 something years and for me in my specialty treating patient is like very easy for me i can close my eyes make diagnosis and treat but the biggest challenge that still i've not gotten used to is to pick up a phone and call somebody that you know um his or her relative has passed mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's something that you never, because every human life, especially if you um, care about your patient's matter. I want to just say one few words on what uh, Professor Umobika said. Okay. For me, like, you know, to break it down, I see patient care like in three buckets. The first bucket, you know, uh, patient presents to you complaining of whatever symptoms that they have. And then the second bucket is you have to, based on, you know, make a diagnosis of what patient has. And then the third bucket, you have to treat that patient. So for me, having practiced in United States and, you know, did my medical school and did my housemanship here, I think the second bucket is the biggest challenge. And that is the crux of the problem of healthcare in Nigeria. Because you know most of our doctors in fairness to them they don't have the equipment to make the diagnosis and then you know that's where the government needs to make because when yeah. you are able to say okay this patient presented to me with this this and this i have equipment you see them you examine them you have the proper equipment to do the proper test and you can then can say okay this is the diagnosis the treatment is okay if it's available if it's not you can refer them so i think if one is asked what's the is the biggest issue or the biggest difference between healthcare in a uh, developing country like here actually is that second bucket which i said which is the diagnosis and which you know the emphasis should be of course you know like professor umobika said some doctors might want to go because of the remuneration but i'm sure there might be a tiny percentage if that middle bucket is there that you know because of that satisfaction they will say okay even though they are not paying us as they pay the doctors abroad you might have very small percentage say okay i'm able to have that satisfaction that i'm able to find out what is wrong with this patient and treat them i'll stay people who still feel that they need the money which would be maybe most of them will still travel abroad. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's very nice. But you know, most of the reasons why this thing are very hard sometimes because um, people out there that it's not in this field, they don't help to keep to good health too. You see somebody that is into drugs or somebody that is taking um, something that he knows. Okay, for instance, smokers in that park they wrote something like smokers are liable to die young and somebody will still be smoking so how do you advise them people out there to help you in your work because it, it, some of them are making it very hard um i think you know we run out of time the, the biggest advice i will give to people like the biggest killer in this country is 
elevated blood pressure and diabetes and you know you hear a lot of stories of people they go on dialysis they drop dead and you know it to make sure is to screen for these two if any person listening to this podcast or this you know interview if you can take it home you know it doesn't cost a lot if people are able to check their blood pressure and check their sugar the dialysis cases which is an epidemic in this country will be cut down by 1995 percent yeah. and that i guarantee you so whoever is listening to this to check your blood pressure and to check your sugar you're gonna you know improve your life and you know there's a lot of host of other things which we're not going to People do a lot of habits because of issues and you know, and but we don't have time in Nigeria to go here. That. People people think you only visit the hospital when you're sick. Yes. They don't they don't make it a thing to go once in a while and run some um, check up tests on their health to know if they are okay. So that's most times they just someone can just die and you know, that's bad. Okay, sir so Miss um, Professor Umeobika, what can you say? Like what do you advise people out there concerning these health issues? Yes, my Dr. Moser just said, made his own advice and recommendation as a physician. I'm making my own advice as a gynecologist. The highest killer, one of the highest killers of women in this country is cancer of the cervix. But this is a very, very preventable disease. Okay, I know most people out there will know what you mean by that. Can you help break it down a little bit? The, I don't cancer. Uh, we, everybody knows what is yeah. cancer. Okay. Then cervix is that part of the womb that connects the womb with the vagina through which a baby passes through delivery. Yeah. That is the cervix, the mouth of the womb. Okay. That is the cervix. So cancer of the cervix is one of the greatest killer in our society but it is no more like that in those developed countries because they adopted the screening the screening methods which can help you detect this cancer 10 years before it appears and at that stage at that stage is still very curable but when it gets to the level at which our people present is already very less so whoever is listening to this my voice this evening if you are a woman if you are a woman from the age of 20 years just make it a point of the thing go for what is called pap smear that is cancer of the cervix screening if you do it you may stay up to five years before you do another and it's not costly with that, you can diagnose all these, uh, I mean, that cancer of the cervix very, very early before you start having the symptoms of bleeding. Because by the time it starts bleeding, that is when they now present to the hospital. And by then, it's already it's late. late. It has yes. spread to other parts of the body. Okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, man. Like I said before, I said earlier, I said it's a very nice thing having you. Because me too, I learned a lot from the short um, educative program and I hope you out there the view viewers you learn to yours too thank you for staying with us we don't have much time I'm still your um, your girl Afro Daima also known as Mwayoka Iveri Kenu and it was nice having Dr. Uche Umozo and Professor Joe Umobika today thank you please um if you enjoy the show and you want to see more of this subscribe to our youtube channels click on the bell button to notify you whenever we post and follow us on our social media platforms and don't forget to continue watching infinite one tv okay sir um please can you give us a shout out like shout out to infinite one tv infinite one tv is where to go <laughs> to cover all your events you know your podcast you know is a very solidly built group that is going to take dissemination of information to the next level thank you very thank much you. what about you prof please can you just give us a shout out infinite one tv i want to congratulate infinite tv infinite group of companies for bringing for bringing this thing very close to us it is good it is good that uh, if you 
go outside and see good thing you bring it home yes that is a good thing in Ibo land so i congratulate them for doing this okay thank you very thank much, you very much and see you next time bye